Hello and welcome to Tip of the Week by CAD Tech Seminars. You can find us on the web at thebimguys.com, the B-I-M-guys.com. We do training, support, BIM coordination, anything to do with Revit or Navisworks. Give us a, check us out on the web. Uh, in this video, we'll go ahead and take a look at how to do room finishes um, and calculate quantities. For instance, we want to know what is it going to take to put the tile, carpet, floors in this residence. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the square footage of the room and then we'll add 10% to it and a calculated formula in a schedule so we can quickly quantify that information. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look. Now first thing you'll notice here, I've got the uh, I've got this plan. Now I've gone over here and just quickly duplicated it and call it a QT for a quality takeoff. And so I've got this little plan set up. Now if I roll over the room tag and I hit tab, you'll see I can see the room and where it's noted. So within here, I've got these different areas that are noted. If you want to see how to uh, add in what are called uh, room separators, they're right here. We also have a video on our website on that or on our YouTube page. So let's go ahead and look at the quantities now. To calculate quantities, what we're going to do is, first of all, we have to verify that we have some finishes in these rooms. So if I click on the kitchen here, you'll see it says wood. Uh, some quick ways to add finishes to uh, your items is put a big old window around it like so. You'll notice that I've highlighted many of the uh, items here. Now what I'm going to do is go up top and hit filter and I'm going to uncheck all, check none, okay, and then I'm going to say just give me just the rooms. When I hit OK on this you'll see it's giving me the rooms and then I can come over here and type in the floor finish. If you want to remove from the set hold the shift or shift key down and it removes from the set. So as of right now you see I have the master bedroom, I have the master closet and I'll unselect the toilet room here and unselect this little room. So let's say these two are, let's say, a particular hardwood. So I'm going to say uh, wood, maybe two, maybe it's a special wood. So I've now noted those two rooms as being hardwood. If I want the master bath to be a particular tile, maybe it's some high-end tile. Again, sometimes it's hard to pick up the room itself. So if you hover over the tag and hit tab, you select it and you can grab that room. So at this time, I'm going to say the floor finish is going to be tile two. So we have a different variation on the tile. You'll also notice that when I'm working in this room that it's not picking up um, the actual areas in here because these walls are, are, are what they call bounding. Uh, if I grab this wall here, and I'm going to go ahead and highlight the wall instead of the door, you'll see that it says room bounding. If I grab these walls and I say you are not room bounding, I uncheck the box. I want you to notice what happens when I hover over the tag and hit tab. You'll notice how now that spacing rolls into here. So what we've done is we've actually uh, told Revit that this is not its own room, it's part of the master bath, and we just did that by telling it room bounding. Uh, the way to actually tell an area that's not involved is go in here and actually use um, what's called a room separator line. I'll go ahead and bring that up, room separator. If I was to draw a room separator line from here to here, uh, and maybe from here to here, you don't see it, it's on a particular layer. Let me tell you where it is, a category. We'll go VB, that's visibility graphics. We scroll down to lines and under the lines here when we expand this out you'll see it says room separator line if I turn this on you will see it and it will print okay but now notice how the room is being restricted to that area so you could take this line move it adjust it just like you adjust anything else and you'll notice that now that the room has been restrained to that uh, these are called room separator lines you can add them as needed and you can also take them out turn them on and off whatever you need to do I'm gonna filter that out <clears throat> hit OK I'm going to delete it. Okay, so that's how we can tell Revit how to define a room. There is one more critical part of defining a room is when I again hover and hit tab, you'll see that this this room is going to the stud. You see how it's actually stopping at the stud. Uh, it's not stopping at the finish, it's stopping at the stud. What defines that? If we go up top and we go to, let's say, for instance, in here, <clears throat> architecture, we go over to room, there's our room separator, and we drop this down. You can define it by going in here and saying, see area and volume computations. Notice it says at wall core layer. In this instance, the core layer is a stud, so it stops at the core layer. If I want to figure it out to finish, I put it at finish, I hit OK. Now if I hover over to the room again, <clears throat> which just popped up just a moment ago, you'll see it's stopping at, the, at actually at the, the sheet rock or jip. So you choose what you want and it will change the square footage because, well, it's calculating a different number. So that's how we get those set up. Now let's run some schedules. To create a schedule, first of all, we have to have something to quantify. In this instance, we have a room. 
and that's the room there. You see the room, the room has wood and they have different materials in it. A uh, quick way to verify that everything's being quantified is fire up the room tag. And notice how most everything in here is going to be quantified. I may quantify that separately because that is uh, the tile bathroom. Um, I could put one in here and that would be a separate one so I could figure out the tile here. If I want to add a room tag, room tag, and I can come in here and place it. So um, I'm just going to say shower. Now it's just going to do the floor. It's not going to do the walls. You have to do the walls by hand or add, a, add a, an element in here. You could actually add a small wall. Uh, it goes up maybe a 72, 86 inches, whatever, however high you want it to be, and then you can quantify those out areas. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look <clears throat> at how to create a quick schedule. We're going to go up top and on the View tab, as we fire it up, you see we have schedules. We drop this down. I want schedules and quantities. And what we're looking for, we have to figure out where we want to quantify from. So I'm going to say this is going to be floor finishes. And I'm going to put QT in front of it. That's for quantity takeoff. Okay, it's going to tell me that that is not necessarily for my construction documents, but it's for me maybe working with the sub or the contractor and figuring out quantities. Or maybe just doing estimating. So at this point, I've got floor finishes. Now, floor finishes are saved within, not necessarily floors, but they're saved in the room. So I'm going to go down to the room here. And we fire up rooms. Now within a room, you'll see what do you want to know about the room. I want to know the area as calculated currently. I want to know the name of the room. Okay. Now if you're doing something commercial, you might pick up the number and some other things. So I'm going to say uh, I want the room area, I want the name, and I want the floor finish. I'll pop that in. Now we can sort these around however we want. I may actually put the uh, finishes up and then I'll say what is the room name that it's associated with and what is the total area of that. So you tell it how you want it to organize, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit OK. What Revit's going to do, it's going to say these are the floor finishes you see in the first column. These are the associated rooms, and then these are the areas that contain those materials. So we quickly were able to quantify those. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the width here a little bit just so it's easier to read. And now it's time to come to sorting and calculating. So we're going to start with the fields tab. When I hit fields, I want you to notice that the fields tab here um, fires up the fields tab here. Now the filter button goes directly to the filter button here. So if I was to close this box and click let's say on formatting, it opens up the same box just jumps to the tab. So you can hit any button and then go where you want to go. So we started here, we told Revit what we wanted. Now we're going to go to filter. We don't need to filter anything out. We're happy with what we have. Sorting and grouping. Now we're going to say sort by how about full finishes. So that's going to gather up the full finishes and tell us to give us a footer. Now, uh, the footer is going to give us uh, either totals, counts, counts and totals. I don't really need a count because really that's not that important. Um, so you could say, well, I want a title and totals or whatever you want. So give us a title and I'll give us a total. And then I may want to know what the total is at the bottom, the grand total. So I hit grand total here. Um, at this point, I hit OK. You see it changes the sorting a bit. It says these finishes have not, have, have not been defined yet. Um, and then the ones that have, here's my carpet. Here's my shower, slate, etc. It's looking a little congested, so I'm going to go back to the uh, group, sorting and grouping again. I'm going to say add a blank line between them. Now that's going to go ahead and, and sort them out. Now if you want to put a header above it, you could say header, and then you could take the footer and say put it as just totals. Now that's going to change it up a little bit. I'll go ahead and hit OK on that. You'll see it says carpet, and then there it is, shower, etc. So how you lay this thing out is really up to you. Now we're going to go ahead and start talking about uh, quantifying. Let's go where we left off, sorting and grouping. Even though we told Revit to calculate totals, it didn't. And what that has to do with is formatting because it wants to know what columns you want to want to quantify. So we're going to come over here to area. I'm going to say take the areas and quantify them. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, well, we want to um, quantify floor finishes. Well, really we do, but we want to know the area of that floor finish. So we're using the number area instead. Let's check it out. We hit OK. And you'll notice that now it says you have 930 uh, undefined areas. Now this is actually a um, ground floor underneath the, uh, the raised building. So that's why it has no finishes. Uh, as we come through, you see we have carpets, we have shower, we have slate, etc. going down the line here. So you can see we have different, um, uh, different things showing up. Let's go ahead and, and make it a little nicer now. So at this point, if we had print this out, you could say here's the carpet. These are the rooms that contain the carpet and here's your total carpet quantity. But many times, different materials require um, uh, drop-off or extra. 
So for carpets and finishes, floor finishes, usually at about 10%. Now I could hand figure out the number, 1,533 times 10% be about 153.3. Add that to that, that's gonna give me one, I don't know, six, eight, one, I don't know, one, 1,700. Or we can let Revit do it. And I would let Revit do it because it's easier. So let's go see how we create that now. I'm gonna to go to fields again, and we're gonna notice as we go through the list, there's not an add 10% field in here. Um, you can create your own, and that's what makes Revit really powerful. So if we come over here, we can create our own single parameter that says, you know, if you wanna know more information about the carpet or you wanna know different things. We can also add what's called a calculated value or calculated parameter. Now I click on this and it comes up and says, give us a name. I'm gonna say plus 10%, uh, okay? That's, that's the name, it has nothing to do with the mathematics but plus the 10%. Now, I come down here and I'm gonna say, what is, uh, is the discipline common? If you use the others, you hit structure, so it gives you weird things. But really, this is just common. And what is this? This is actually a, a, an area, so I'm gonna keep it with area. Now, the formula is, we go ahead, the, the little three dots here makes it easy. The area, and if you're used to Excel, if you're an Excel person, you know the syntax. Area, and then I'm gonna put a space, asterisk. The space is not required, but it makes it read easy. Times uh, 1.1. Now, what I'm doing is I'm gonna take the, to get the area plus 10%, I gotta have the area, which is one, plus the 10%, which is uh, 10 there. So that's my, my calculation. So area times 1.1 is gonna give me the area plus 10%. We'll go ahead and hit OK on that. What that's doing is I've got a cute little uh, name, plus 10%, and let's see what happens. We hit OK. Notice how quickly it did that for us. So I don't have to do the calculations. 25 plus 2.5, 10%, equals 28 rounded up. So that gives us a nice little clean number. So pretty cool stuff there. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can make uh, it add up this column. Now, earlier I mentioned that you tell Revit what columns to calculate. And if we go back to, let's say, sorting and grouping, we've told it to say, okay, give us the totals. But you notice that it's not giving us the totals of that particular column because that's done in the formatting area. So it says currently, give us the calculated totals of area. But we have to tell it, give us the calculated totals of the plus 10% totals. So I hit calculate totals. And when I hit OK on that, you'll notice now it's giving us that total. So instead of us doing it by hand, now this is area, area plus 10%. So that makes it nice. Now, if you want to change the, the, the naming because maybe it's a little weird, you can always click here, a nice little tidbit, and you say you click in the box, right? Um, and you can change it. So I'll say area plus 10%. There you go. So now uh, we've got this, makes it easy to read. And we have the total. Now, this is a total uh, amount of flooring we will need, 5,533. Uh, and it's broken down into all the different uh, quantities, which makes this nice is any time we're working, any changes we make will then be adjusted here. Let's take, the note of, take note of the wood here. Notice the wood is at 1851. If we go back to our, our plan and we decide that, okay, the, the kitchen, they want to use some, maybe they want to use some specialized tile. We come in here and we may call this, let's say, um, I'm going to call this, who knows what, we'll call it, uh, I don't know, sandstone. Who knows what they want to use, right? They choose something different and maybe it's a, maybe they have two or three of them, so we'll call it sandstone one. So now we've got some stone in here or slate, whatever you want it to be, we'd make the change. Now what happens is in a finished schedule, it updates. If we have a finished schedule, it just says what it is. And then for us to calculate the differences, we go back to that previous, hit control tab. Uh, you'll notice as we come down here, see it says sandstone. So now it's been quantified in the area. This is the square footage of the kitchen and then the calculated value. So hope you enjoyed that tip of the week. Uh, that is how you get floor finish calculations in Revit.